and a good evening to all of you on YouTube. Um, we have finally figured out how to do this thing of actually showing everybody and that's a good in the evening to all of you on YouTube. That's in the um, um, live stream. We have finally, and the fun part is hearing myself twice. <laughs> <laughs> the echo. Uh huh. So, bear with me one moment while I get these texts off. And oops, I want that on. I want it this off. I just had it, so I know it works. <laughs> Turn that off. Oh, come on. Where'd it go? Oh, duh. It might help if I just actually put it on the right feed. All right, so. Norm's in the top, JP's in the bottom. That's the scripture. Um, That's funny, because on mine, I'm on the top and you're on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I guess it's the benefit of being the presenter. Yeah, problem. Now, here's where it gets interesting. This is uh, what's called video. Very simply, and I'm just even going to drop the link if anybody wants to join us. I have a legit link. I'm putting it into the YouTube. Make sure it's copying. Yep. Oh, shoot. It's not. I may have to go into YouTube and actually copy the full thing. Anywho. You. <laughs> huh? Yes, JP? Yeah, I was kind of, um, this download of stuff is getting kind of, it's kind of freaky. Not freaky, but it's kind of, it takes you by surprise. <laughs> you mean the, the, the layout? No, I'm talking about downloading and from the Holy Spirit from up, oh. up above. Oh, that stuff, yeah. Gotcha. You know what I mean? It's like, you see that, whoa, really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, it, it's like the, you know, the point where you, I was sitting in the church with my wife mm -hmm. and we were, and I, I talked to you about this, but uh, we were sitting in the, in the um, church and the pastor was asking after we had just had this bit of prayer meeting, has anyone got a word in the church? And, and we were, and just I, realized, I talked to you about this, this not pointing but, at my face. Uh, we were sitting in the, <laughs> in the, uh, uh, but, Church and he asked, "Does anybody have a word?" And I said, "Yeah, had this if we but if th there's this has anyone got ability and for us to ask God to pull the hedge of darkness out of the world, uh, but especially the United States, so that asked, all the things of the word? darkness said, can be uncovered, yeah, and if the force of light just reveals ability, everything that's going on." For us to ask God to pull the hedge, everybody was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> and in the, in the meantime, um, now, JP, you haven't, you haven't even seen this. Uh, our good buddy from South Africa, that doesn't want to be named. I know you don't. <laughs> has got this document of 53 towers, or not towers, uh, the 53 um, classes of demon and these wow. th this specific layout names every demon like it's principality or stronghold and then every one of the sub demons that supports those it's under it yeah they, they, wow and so what this is going to become is a free resource for anyone who needs to have the know-how. Okay, this is the symptom I have. What's the stronghold? And 
is going to be completely free. It's going to be available on his website, on my website. And here's the greatest part. It's also something that you and I, JP, it's an individual that you and I both know, and she's okay with being mentioned. Um, Angela helped put it together. Cool. So we definitely need that. You know, you already know we need I got that. goosebumps, so I know it's good. You already know we need that. Yeah, I'm getting the chills on the side of my head. No, yeah. So when I was looking That's at the scary. list, I just I'm getting the chills on the side of my head. When I when I was looking at the list, I'm looking at this list like I had ninety percent of this stuff. When I first started the ministry, I had ninety percent of this stuff. Yeah. And, and I was telling yeah. And, I was telling um, go ahead. Brittany, I was like, you don't get it. And I was trying to tell her like when I first came in the group, the stuff that I got rid of was it took a it, it I was talking I was talking, for me it took everybody's different because everybody got different stuff to deal with, especially with their bloodline. So but all the stuff you get said it's sort of like repentance is a lifestyle. It's definitely the same. It's sort of like deliverance too, because you you constantly picking up stuff that, well, dang, okay, now I see that. <laughs> now you get the whole spirit, like you said, he exposes it to you. Says, bro, you need to change this. So this got to stop. And you know, it's yeah. it's awesome. It's cool. And she and she's looking at me, and I know it's like. Talking like you know, grapes to oranges to her. She doesn't really get it because she's not, you know, there's so much bondage there, which is that's a whole other topic. But whoo, the Lord works. I mean, it's just, it's just wild. I mean, it's weird because you you ask like you think things are moving slowly, uh, but yeah. you gotta forget we're on. It is, we already you know because you've been there, but if people don't realize there's people in heaven. There's no time, so. Here we go by time, which is off. That's why the spirit real realm is the original realm. It's more real than where we are right now. So that's yeah. what you have to think of. That's where we, we're so used to, well, we got to rush, rush, rush. And none. God has an order, plan. Everything is all prescripted. He kind of, if I'm right knowing, you can correct me if I'm right. He basically kind of in the past a little bit. When I was in heaven a couple times, um, there would be a distinct knowledge that time was going on on the earth but it was going so super slow like um, this the specific you know point of reference story where I talk about like having gone to heaven and when I go through the detail explaining everything that happened it takes about 20 minutes to explain it happened in two and a half minutes. Yeah. So. Wow. I am going to get the uh, intro video started. Oh, I will put out a warning to people when they'll be live, whatever. <laughs> no, I know you are a uh... Heard about the movie. I never watched it, but I heard about it. The movie Deliverance, mm -hmm. people do not watch it. Yeah, yeah, uh, no kidding. That's, uh, that's good. Just... Sister of the Faith. Uh, that, that Tiffany, um, from uh, known as Fire, the other Tiffany, the pro she saw it, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit told her, repent of it because it opens up gateways, like portals, like crazy. Yep. You are, it's a, First of all, there's no way they could t somebody who has an alternative lifestyle could teach a movie about deliverance. To the police, so that it's all off, it's wrong. The whole movie. So yep. this, it was just like Poltergeist one, and she explained that too, which I saw that plenty of times. But I get it. You know what I'm saying? Now I really get it. You know? Now I really get why I watched it too. <laughs> That's kind of ironic. Too. <laughs> you can't make this up, people. <laughs> you really can't. I mean. You know, when, when I was in the church and the Holy Spirit was dropping on me that the reason that the kingdom of darkness had been able to move so effortlessly is because of the hedge. And when you 
when you if you look that look at the word hedge, it doesn't mean a spiritual covering. It means a network of people that have all gathered together and they're the ones that are doing the praying. They're the ones doing the sacrifices. They're the, they're the ones who are doing all the work to make sure that a hedge, not hedge, but a network of blindness is over the vision of the general population so that they can't see that there is yep. all this evil happening. And so, um, my wife had some, I'm going to, I was going to do the intro, still going to do the intro, but my wife had these dreams. She first, she's there for, um, sorry. She first thought it was a dream, but it was so real. So she knew it was not a dream. She kept having these dreams that the, um, there's these covens that she'd be going to and she'd be preaching them and she'd be telling them, listen, this, this God that you say you, that, the, the, all the witches and et cetera, that all they say, he's out to get you. He's out to destroy you. He's, and he's, and you have to destroy all his believers before he destroys you. That's the judgment. That's not now. And you can actually turn and give your life to God right now. And she was having these visions of going into these covens and telling all these people about the need to give their life to God. And a couple days later, Helena hit. Wow. The covens are still in place. Their, their lodges have been thrown to pieces but the covens are still there because they're astral projecting in they're astral projecting they're projecting into their spiritual spot so since okay, they're someone. yeah since their physical thing is gone they're having to astral project into the location which means that they are not still having as the strong they can't block any person who is praying in the spirit having these dreams and going and preach. Now, here's where it gets very, very fun. You gotta destroy the ley lines. She'd be sitting up with her eyes shut, dreaming. Wow. And I'm She's operating in the spirit. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. And you can't be talking like that to them in the spirit if you still look like them. You cannot have authority over any uh, spiritual realm if you still smell like them. And hence, and think about that prayer. You know what prayer I'm talking about, Norm. Mm -hmm. But just covering, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that exactly what's happening with it. That's crazy. That prayer is so awesome. I love that dang old prayer. That's a, that's, that's a must every morning, brother. <laughs> I first found that prayer about six or seven years ago. I found the Bride Ministries group uh, site, and it was completely God directing my finger strokes to look it up. And I remember that when I first saw it, I was so convinced that if I were to pray this, I'd die. Wow. You thought it was coming against you. <laughs> because of it. Yeah. smelling like so many different kingdoms. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every, it, 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 it hits so much. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to do the intro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah.
that. You could definitely do that, but the difficulty there is that um, you'll hear yourself as well. No, I mean, the, my earpiece is connected to the phone. So oh, I'm getting it. Gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. You could do that. You could definitely do that, but the difficulty there is that. Um, so here's where it gets really fun. Well, what do you want uh, to hear and use echo? <laughs> I can, I, I'm also putting the comment on Facebook since I'm streaming there. Uh, so the individuals can. Oh, it's a big delay. Here. You're right. I do hear myself. It's a delay. <laughs> <in this. laughs> I told you. All right. So the specific title for tonight was um, How are we supposed to judge each other or judge anyone else after this election? And I'm fairly certain that a lot of people don't know this verse. The verse is very simply, oh, come on, I'm trying to get this to move. There it goes. Actually, let me resize it a little. By this, excuse me, if you love each other, everyone will know that you are my disciples. So, <clears throat> if you don't love each other, if you're so focused about how it seemed, I'm going to actually take that off. Now, JP, if you're talking, I hope I can hear it, but actually I'm taking it off because otherwise I keep hearing myself. And <laughs> Do you hear me? Um, if there is so much focus on how you did not want that guy in office. Um, you're not for <clears throat> Jesus. If you also don't like all the people who voted that guy in. If you didn't like the woman and her policies. That's one thing. If you didn't like the woman and her policies, and you also hated every other person who didn't like, who, who, all, who liked that woman, you're not a disciple of Jesus. You can't be. Now, here's the good part about this thing of agape. It doesn't mean I'm going to be mushy all on all for you just because I can. It's actually I'm going to see you in the design that God made for you to be. And as a result of you being in what God designed you to be, I can look beyond what you're choosing to do. But here's what gets very interesting. You cannot be focused on what someone else is choosing to do and then also see what God has designed them to do and then choose to see what they're doing, r level, uh, raise that in importance higher than who God designed them to be. Because the moment that you are seeing that they've made this particular choice, but you know what they are capable of in God's design, and instead of looking what they're capable of in God's design, you're instead looking at what they chose to do, you're not a disciple of Jesus. You're not. If what the person does is so much more important and so much more valuable to your perspective than what 
God designed them to do. And you're not looking at what God designed them to do and that he, they, they could, in fact, be doing something completely different. If that's not the way that you're seeing things, you're not his disciple. Here's where it gets really, really cool. I have given you, this is his disciples, I have given you the power to trample on snakes and scorpions and to defeat the power of your enemy, Satan. Nothing can harm you. Listen. If you are so focused on what the person did, You're not a disciple. And if you are a disciple, you're sure not letting that part shine. When Jesus was in his, in his uh, trial, and Peter was at the gate warming his hands at the fire, and the Servant girl says, hey, 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 you, you look like the one who is, you look, you look like one of the followers of the one who is currently on trial. And Peter says, I have no clue who you're talking about. Uh, first time he just said that. Second time he cursed out his family. The third time he cussed out who was said Jesus was just a piece of bleep bleep bleep, cussed out his family line bleep bleep bleep, and said you bleep 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 bleeps don't know who you are, don't know who I am, don't know what you're talking about. Jesus says to Peter, Simon, Satan has, desire, has desired to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you so that when you fall, you will be able to return. When you have repented, encourage your brothers. I hadn't ever seen this before. I want to show it to you. It is this, but not this. John 21. And I'm going to actually bring it up in the Amplified because that's the only one that shows from the English or from the Greek to English what's really being said. It's literally called the love motivation. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? more than these others do with total commitment and devotion. Do you put who I am and what's going on? Do you put everything that I have done in your life and for the life of the entire neighborhood? Do you value who I am and do you place that higher than every other person? Peter says, you know, I like you like a friend. They weren't on the same playing field. Jesus says, feed my sheep. Or excuse me, feed my lambs. He says, 
a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me with total commitment and devotion? Do you value everything that's been going on with so much love and recognition that I am number one? Do you see that? Peter says, you know I like you like a friend. Finally, third time, do you love me like a friend? He says, yeah, you know I do. And he so feed my sheep. There's something going on here. If you don't see it, if you read it in the average, such as KJV, it's only ever lovest thou me, lovest thou me, lovest thou me. It's not connecting dots until you go looking at something like this. Because the Amplified is the Greek to English, you'll see what's really being said. And so Jesus is asking Peter. Do you put my love for you, my plan for you, do you put all of that higher than the rest of the world? And Peter, even though the Holy Spirit had been breathed on him, still wasn't at the playing field. Only after they were in the day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit fell on the entire group. Only then did Peter finally arrive. So, hmm, how are you supposed to judge someone after this election? First of all, there is the Ministry of Reconciliation where you are, you, you see where every person is you see what they are designed to be do doing, and you see that God loves them, has already forgiven them of their of the sin of stepping away from him, and he just wants them to come home. That's the specific presentation that's given. And then when the person returns, he says, listen, you have ways of seeing other people where you think you can hold things against them. I'm telling you right here, right now, if you want my glory to fall on you, you have to see every person for who I make them to be. And since you love them, it's not, there's no, no debate there. Since you love them as I do, knowing that I forgive you for everything, forgive them for everything. That is the, it, that's like the deciding line for, are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Do you forgive the entire Democratic Party and love them and see them for seeing reconcilable to Christ? Do you see the entire Republican Party as lovable, as forgivable, as ability to return into the thing of God, the design of God. Can you see it? Because there's there's two possible things. Do you want to say, say something, JP? You had to end up. No, no, it's funny how uh, we went with the Peter and denying three times. Um, a cousin last night kept asking me, I don't know why. He said, "What sign are you?" I said, "I don't, I don't believe in signs. The signs of witchcraft." No, what sign are you? What are you? Uh, I said, "No." I, she, she, she asked me three times. And every time, I said, "No." No, I just don't. I'm not doing it. I'm not. I'm not claiming. I don't claim it. I don't believe it. I, I told her, I told her it's witchcraft, and didn't get deep into it. But you know, you know why? <laughs> I'm not agreeing to that stuff. No, 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 no. Been there. No, it's too hard of a one to repent of. <laughs> Somebody asked me, Norm, what's your sign? 
And I said, you mean the dead one? <laughs> like, huh? So yeah, the dead one. <laughs> no, 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 what's your sign? I said, the, the dead one? Finally, they asked, what do you mean, dead one? <laughs> and I was able to say, well, you know, I'm Christian. So when I am baptized into Christ, all the things I used to be die. Die. Yeah. All the connections I used to have die. So that means that the star sign died. Why do I want to talk about it? And People, said, well, when you agree. Oh. I want you to talk about it so I know how to see you. I said, oh, that's easy. See me alive in Christ. <laughs> <laughs> People. And you like, agree. No, the, the sign. I said, yeah, people, when you agree to a zodiac sign, you're agreeing to a demon that runs a sign that you're under. Do not come in agreement with it. Trust me, the repentance for it is will kick your butt. Me and Noah have been through it, you know. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> not an easy one to tackle. <laughs> it's, it's like I was saying um, to my wife this past week. I think I, I shared it on Monday. I'm not, I don't remember it been a crazy crazy good week um between last thursday to now a new week started at my job and i have as a goal well excuse me i have had as a goal 20 sales with a minimum of Five cancellations, excuse me, 25 sales with a minimum of five cancellations. I'd, I'd been having that particular goal. And my wife and I were talking it over last week. She says, why not double it? Or at least take it up to 40. See what God can do for you. And so I didn't tell anybody else, but I said that I've got a specific goal. And by yesterday, of the goal of 40, I got 16. That's never happened before. Usually, in the span of one week, I might have four. But I have four times as much. Yeah, four times four is 16, yeah. <laughs> so I was asking a couple of people, do you think I should actually uh, just set my goal a little higher? <laughs> <laughs> There's... One of my teammates, um, and she's actually here in North Carolina. One of my teammates made a whopping 60 sales in one day. Wow. It has never, in the history of that program, has it ever been done. And she knocked it out of the park. And the funniest part was she did not even connect the dots that coughing a lot would cause her, her throat to be a little raspy. So the next day, she's like, I don't, it seems like I'm coming down with something. I can barely talk. And we're like, yeah, hit 60 sales. You talked about <laughs> <laughs> She didn't connect that. But um, that, that type of fire hit the entire team. And the entire team uh, on Monday hit 100 sales. And then on wow. Tuesday, hit another 100 sales. And it got to the point that the quality team that required to sit through all these calls, there's like, they're, they're used to having in, having maybe 30 sales per day. They came in on uh, Monday morning, just had a couple handful of sales. And they're like, okay, we can do that. Tuesday come in. Hunter sales. Oh, okay. Well, well, we'll get to it. And then Wednesday morning, they come in. Hunter sales. What? It, it swamped them. They, they couldn't keep up. But rabbit trail. Um, this thing about seeing a person as what they did or didn't do. Jesus encountered some, as 
the of Scholars Day, he encountered about 800,000 people in the span of three years. And he didn't call any of them losers, failures, or the inability to repent. The inability to change. He didn't, he didn't call that over any one of them. Even John 17 speaks his, his book of destiny for the Son of Man came not to condemn the world or to hold their past against them or their present, but that the world through him might be saved. And I got that revelation at the beginning of uh, 2024. Since Jesus did not come to this earth, actually it was 2023 that I got this revelation. Uh, since Jesus did not come to the earth to condemn condemn anyone, I can't either. Since he's not holding the past against anyone, I can't either. Since he's not holding the present against anyone, I can't either. If I'm saying I be, I'm a disciple of Jesus, but I want to hold select things against someone, I'm showing I'm a disciple of hell. And not Jesus. Which brings me to a not so popular It is not this, not this particular chapter. Give me one moment. Galatians. Where's that? I tell you, this this video so cool, so cool that I can just flip back and forth and show this. Sneak, sneak. All right, let me resize this just a tad more. There we go. Oh, stop. I want to try this. Start verse 14, my friend, you are chosen to be free. So don't use your freedom. This is from the common English version. Don't use your freedom as an excuse to do anything you want. Use it as an excuse, excuse me, use it as an opportunity to serve each other with love. All the law says can be summed up in the command to love others as much as you love yourself. But if you keep attacking each other like wild animals, you had better watch out or you will destroy yourself. If you are guided by the Spirit, you won't obey your selfish desires. The spirit and your desires are enemies of each other. They are always fighting each other and keeping you from doing what you feel you should. But if you obey the spirit, the law of Moses has no control over you. Little thing here. If you are guided by the spirit, you won't obey your selfish desires, is what it says. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, says it a little differently. I have that as one of the passages I thought I did. No, but I can make it be. <laughs> Let's grab. Oh, yeah, here.
If you belong to Christ Jesus, you won't be punished. The Holy Spirit will give you life that comes from Christ Jesus and will set you free from sin and death. Let's grab that in the Amplified. In fact, let's just grab both of them in the Amplified. <laughs> All right, so Romans 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, no guilt verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. For the law of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being has set you free from the law of sin and death. There's Romans 8. Coming over here to verse 13 in the in Galatians in the Amplified. For you, my brothers, were called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom become an opportunity for the sinful nature worldliness, selfishness, but through love, serve and seek the best for one another. For the whole law concerning human relationships is fulfilled in one precept. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is, you shall have an unselfish concern for others and do things for their benefit. That's the law. Yeah. It goes a little deeper than that. The word law means standard. Standard definition. So the standard definition of how to live is the law of Moses. The standard definition of how to treat each other is the law of oh, Moses. The Torah. That has not changed. Even in the New Testament, that has not changed. That has not died. It's not been done away with. It still stands. But here's where it's right. really interesting because only in Romans does this actually get laid out. In Romans. Here's the law of the Spirit. Has set us free from the law of sin and death. So there's two different laws. There's the law of sin and death. Or... So another way of saying it is the law of sin resulting in death or the law of the spirit resulting in life in Christ Jesus. It is a set and standard definition of how to do life. So if you are seeing a person how they voted, like I didn't want them to vote. Okay, cool. Uh, let me ask you. Um, do you love Jesus like a friend? Or do you value everything that he said more importantly than everything else? Do you say that you share a life with God and keep on living in the dark? You are. Do you know you're lying? You know, liars don't get into heaven. Now, 
there's there's a very very specific reason. That's the why I'm telling you that. So. I like to get onto Facebook and I like to, to get into groups. And this is my <laughs> keyboard warrior machine. And I'll be working my job and da -da 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 Typing on Facebook. And I was very disappointed about the number of individuals who kept referring to Satan. I'm sorry, sorry, as Trump. And, okay, the world, the, the, the land is now con consumed and, con and condemned now that Satan is sitting, I'm sorry, because Trump, Hitler, is sitting in the office. And this is what I say to each one of them. With very amusing to me results. I'd say, and as you have judged these here, you will be judged here on earth and in heaven. And 90% of the people that I said that to would delete their comment. <laughs> well, like you said, you hit the hammer, with the nail with the hammer earlier. About, if you look, it's kind of, even we go there even in Christian-wise for people who say the believers and how the reaction about Trump and Kamala. And it was really quite obvious if you looked at the spirit. One was promoting death, the other was promoting life. It was so bluntly, anybody could see it. Even, even, even the last go around. But what I noticed today, and especially with the thing about this, the one who was promoting death, and we went through this, we had this conversation when the Roe versus Wade flip, how the streets got crazy because the blood was not coming to the altars. The same thing happened after this election. It's happening now. I see it. I feel it. it the, the altars are not getting fed the blood, and they're going crazy in the streets. The same thing happening. Because you're not going to condone killing these children. I mean, a buddy of mine had a diabetic. He said in Florida alone, there was 700,000 abortions last year. Only 14% because, you know, that really needed, you know, that's crazy. That is insane. No wonder, if you guys know how much God loves us, he really loves the children as well. This is not good. If Jeff Webb is going to be in America quicker if it went the other way. Trust me on this one. If y'all don't know, I know he's not the, you know, bolded right yet because he's still young in the faith, but God was had Trump as his man from day one. He is a believer. People don't know that. And he has good people around him. There's a there's a fellow that my cousin Benjamin first sent me a clip. I sent it to you. I sent it to Mr. Mr. A in South Africa. Yeah. And Mr. A says, "Wow. That guy actually is pretty good." So, I didn't tell my wife about this guy. Didn't share the link with her at all didn't say his name about a month after <laughs> about a month after i have watched this video with headphones so that she definitely would not be able to hear about a month later she's watching him on her on her laptop <laughs> and he said something i overheard it she told me it later She said, or this, uh, this uh, Suda, or Saru, whatever his name is, he's, an, he's, a, he's in India, but he's an amazing Christian teacher, televangelist type thing, um, said that the Lord came to him in a dream, 
said, I stopped Trump from becoming a president in 2020 because I saw that he would come in there with so much pride in his heart and so take the company take the country to such an it's such an amazing height uh, financially so that when he come out of office the financial crash would cause 50% of Americans to kill themselves outright because of how fast that crash would come. So rather than having so many people kill themselves because of the financial crash, God prevents this prideful, arrogant individual from becoming president and instead steers someone into the country that would cause the American people to become starved for freedom. And then, now that was a, that's a pretty interesting dream the guy said. And then, not, I'm not laughing because it's funny, I'm laughing because of how accurate this is. He says, I had a vision about Kamala. In the vision, she was the woman riding on a beast, the beast with ten horns, the woman who was who was the head of so much bloodshed, and that if the Americans would just sit on their blessed assurance, that's a Natasha phrase, if they just sit on their blessed assurance and do absolutely nothing. That would be the outcome of America within two years. Now, here's where it gets very, very interesting. Guess when that was recorded? That particular sharing of that particular vision. Guess when that was shared on this on this guy's live stream? A couple months ago? Three days after Helena hit. Wow. Well, it was kind of funny. Because, you know, I'm not the biggest political dude in the world. Because I'm, you know, that's just me. But I do follow what's going on in the biblical sense of the whole thing. And I know, I guess the... President, chief of staff, uh, commander in chief now is t typically the left, and the, she was the right. Now, three days ago, I caught a clip on YouTube, and Mr. Uh, Prophet Elias said he had a dream that before the election, it was a shift, and they gave power to the left. <laughs> and that's where it's going to be. And if it would have stayed, to the right, he said, judgment would have come on America sooner than God wanted to, because he's trying to save people's lives. People try more people. The goal is people is we here to help people get to heaven. <laughs> we we try to God wants us to come home. You know, he's trying to save much either the violence of sinners. He want the murder doesn't matter. You can repent. If you separate, you're good. Now, this political game, like you said, is a lot of. Like you said, God's always had people in charge. That's how it happened from the beginning of time. We, we've seen this from the all history through the Bible. God puts it in who he wants to be for a certain task. That's why we shouldn't argue about it, you know. But like you said, we're on his time, not our time, even though we're impatient by nature, you know. I know I can, I've gotten older I get, the more patient I get. But I can remember when I was back in my 20s, I don't even think I could even <laughs> survive it. <laughs> Oh, too, you know, out of my mind, but, you know, Jesus is Lord, and we got a lot of work to do still, because there's still a lot of people out here that just, just don't get it, and it's, and it's sad because it's a lot of, there's a lot of blood in a lot of people's hands, and it shouldn't be, it should, you know, remember, it's, it's, it's a war, it's definitely a war, 
Do we rest back dead in the middle of it? I was, um, I was on a friend's Facebook page. And she was commenting about how the country is so divided. And there's so many people who have their opinions of what they thought the, con the country, how the country was going to vote. And then that's not how it happened. And she made the comment, so many people are so upset about what's happened. She says, I'm not going to look at or comment about how upset people are. I'm going to just say that I put my hope and trust in God only. And this young lady commented how she cannot understand why there are so many hypocrites. Supposedly they're all about love, but they voted for somebody that she didn't want. How could they be for love if they voted for the other person? And I jumped into the comments because I, I, I saw something. I saw that this individual already knew what God's love was and didn't like it and had their opinions about why God's love wasn't good enough. So I started a little back and forth. Well, my friend didn't see it until a little after. She sends me this amazing message. Saying, hey, uh, the person that you're talking to used to be in church, does know who God is, doesn't want to acknowledge it. And I said, well, myself, my wife, and my roommate, we all came to the knowledge of God because God wouldn't let us sleep until we made our hearts right with him. Would you be in agreement with that? <laughs> it's like, yeah. absolutely. So, <laughs> um, Roberta, you find this. <laughs> and you can't understand why you can't sleep. I would invite you to watch this entire thing. Find out. Oh, the, the other thing. had a uh, conversation with a friend of mine because they were kind of upset. They were getting a little in the feelings about, oh, a woman should have the right to do what she wanted to do with their body. And this and I said, do you know where actually abortion started from? It started from the fallen angels. That's who taught us abortions. Also taught us witchcraft. Also taught us a lot of other things. You don't think this is a coincidence. This is good and evil you're dealing with right now. And, and this thing, but even babies born out of wedlock. We, we, it's a whole, this is why this world is screwed up right now, because you guys are not following what God wants to do. You're doing your own thing, and this is why the world's in trouble. <laughs> this is why this stuff has happened. This is why it's a lot of stuff that's that. No, it's, it's basic, but you make it harder than it is, because you're so focused on the stuff. Yeah, you're carnal, as it is. It's carnality, period. You're not looking at the The deal is, is, we have laws. It's a reason for it, and this is why this is an outcome of it. <laughs> it is what it is, folks. Like yeah. I said, be safe. Love Jesus. <laughs> Repent. The God of this world has blinded the eyes of every person who wants to do their own thing. You know, I heard this uh, amazing back and forth uh individual is asking frank turk why would god not just allow us to do what we want because we want to do it why would god not just make that choice and then while we're doing what we want why is god so against us that he wants to make sure we are crushed down and can't get back up and he thinks about it he says you know it's, it's a very interesting question that you asked me uh i remember that the first one who posed that type of question to humanity was a snake 
and the human said yes and look at where we are where we are right now yep um before i started the repentance 101 group or even the channel i was given this dream i don't know that i've ever shared it i've definitely kind of described it but i never told about this dream i dreamed that i was and this is really neat having this second pair of glasses reminded me of it now great part is both of these glasses have about the same uh, prescription so it's not going to matter which one i'm wearing but how it looks is going to be different uh so i dreamed that i had this set of glasses and i had the ability to see how people are and what they are doing but then i had this other set of glasses that i would put on and because of this different pair of glasses now instead of seeing what the person was doing now i could also see what they were designed for and in the stream i was like i was looking at somebody and i and i took off this glass and i i put back on the, the the glass it showed me what they were doing and okay that part seems like that this glass also has that all right now what does this one have that this one doesn't so i i put the the new pair on okay the new pair also shows me what they're doing but it shows me what they could be doing i take this off i put on the old pair and to my shock i could not with the old pair of glasses i could not see what a person was designed to do i could only see what they were doing i couldn't see what they were designed to do and i was like oh, god what are you trying to teach me here and he says if you're going to claim that you are a christian and that you are serving me make sure that how you used to view people is no longer how you do view them put that way of life away see people for who i made them to be see them where they are sure but also see them for what god made them to be and now you have a understanding of how to talk to them well look okay this is what you're doing this is what god designed you to be i'm looking at this of what you are designed to be and I know you can't see it because you don't actually love Jesus. You don't actually hate how you used to do life so much that you are willing to lay it down. You don't hate it yet. So I'm going to pray that you hate it. I'm going to pray that you get to that point where you so hate the way you're doing life and you just want an out. And at that point, you're hungry. At that point, you're, you're hungry enough, you're going to want to serve Christ. And, you know, I was wrestling about whether or not that was a way that I should present to anyone. Because it seemed so rough, seemed so harsh, seemed so ungodly, to put it like that. And then I heard Mr. Dan Moeller say, how his brother got saved. So his brother, um, I think his brother's name was David. His brother David saw this change in his brother Dan. And they'd go out hunting. And then they'd go out to some conference. And Dan, uh, David would just be watching Dan. And he'd be like, listening to all these all these testimonies 
And uh, Dan would, would consistently be telling him all these things that God does. And David would be asking, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? And finally, Dan says, you know what? No, I'm not going to tell you. You could ask questions. I could answer you. But me answering the questions is not changing you. You're getting a bunch of knowledge about it, but it's not changing you because you're not changing. So I'm not going to tell you anything more. I'm going to no more, no more uh, testimonies, no more explaining what's going on, no more answering your questions. I'm just going to stop talking to you all together, and you need to have your come to Jesus moment all by yourself. David's like, ah. now you're being the old Dan. Now you're being me. And Dan's like, no, I can't. I can't force you to drink. Thanks, you know, thanks. You, you, you have to drink by yourself. I can't force you. So David goes on a vacation with his family up in the mountains. Has his old radio, the antenna. And he's trying to find a station to listen to. And the only station that he can catch is a Christian music station. There's very little talking. And he's hearing the words. And the words are messing him up. Because the words are saying the same thing that his brother is saying. Except now it's in music. And his radio didn't hardly reach any other stations except that his phone could still reach the tower. So he grabs his phone. He's like, I want to know about this Jesus that you're talking about. So there is, there is telling and telling and telling and telling telling and telling and telling and telling and telling and telling a person about how they are to view other people. But if they're keeping the old way of living, the old way of looking, the old way of observing, and the old way of doing life, if they're keeping that out of the box and they're still using that, it's actually a blind um, yes. I forget where it is in Rome. Could we call it a bewitchment? No, it's actually not a bewitchment. It's a, per, a person under a curse. They don't see the curse. That's bewitchment, eh? Let me grab my handy dandy search box. <laughs> I'm talking of a person like a, like a friend of mine that's which I could bluntly see because because how we look at the spirit and we was taught and what God has how made our spiritual gifts. I can see the curses and name the curses and sp- and she don't get it. <laughs> she don't see it. And I was bluntly to me, I'm like, and I said, I guess it's got to be God has to praise it. Let her see for herself, take the scales off her eyes and feel that she's in this way that is, there's only one way out, because you can't. A curse is a land that is not warranted. The only way out is Jesus and the blood of Jesus. That's the only way you're gonna break a curse. Sorry. <laughs> Romans eight, right after it talks about the law of the spirit versus the law of sin and death, verse five: For those who are living according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, which gratify the body. But those who are living according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit, His will and purpose. Now the mind of the flesh is death both now and forever because it pursues sin. But the mind of the Spirit is life and peace, the spirit of well-being that comes from walking with God both now and forever. The mind of the flesh with its sinful pursuit is actively hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law since it cannot. It 
is not so much a issue of the person not being able to see or not being able to connect the dots as to how to see a person according to how God sees them. It's literally that God blocks them. Because, as I was talking about when I did the Romans study, if the mind of flesh with fit with sinful pursuits would be apt would be able to submit itself to God's law. It would be the equivalent of Adam and Eve eating from the tree of good and evil and the tree of life simultaneously. You can't serve two masters. So, <clears throat> if you don't like your neighbor and you think the way that your neighbor did life is so evil. And you think that they should have known better than to vote for that guy. If you say you share life in, with God and keep on living in the dark, you are a liar. If we live in the light, as God does, we share in life with each other, and the blood of the, the blood of the Son Jesus washes all our sins away. If we say we have not sinned, we are fooling ourselves, and the truth isn't in our hearts. But if we confess our sins to God, He can always be trusted to forgive us and take our sins away. I was having an interesting conversation with a guy today. I'm helping him write a book. And here's an individual who has, who grew up in the Mennonite church. I'm much more familiar with that than the majority of people because it's so close to the Amish. It's like Amish but with a different skin. Uh, but the way in which the enemy has so distort the mind to be so focused on what they want what to what the Bible to say versus what the Bible is saying. For example, uh, they use the passage in Joel chapter two, I think, of how the Spirit of God is going to pour out on all flesh. They use that passage as the reason why baptism is pouring a glass of water over somebody's head. And that's <laughs> baptism. Well, you use the scripture for anything other than what it says, that's witchcraft. But, mm. to present the word of God to say what you want it to say, instead of the word of God saying what it's supposed to, what it's actually written to say. Yeah, witchcraft too. Hmm? That's witchcraft too. I, I mean, that, that is witchcraft. But, if individual believes 100% that they are doing this from God's design, That means there's a strong. That means they don't see it. And so, Harold, <laughs> yes, yeah, going to link this particular part of the video. There's two ways that the enemy goes after people. The first way is through trickery. 
of bait of bait twitch. Yeah. The modern world calls it clickbait because it has this image of what it looks like it's going to be. You click on it. It is totally different. Something completely different. So the first way that the enemy works on someone is the bait and switch. The second way that he works on someone is to condemn those who think differently. That's still a Mennonite. Still talking about the Mennonite. But unless you walk out Matthew 5.25, since you came from that way of life, you've discovered how evil it is. Since you came from that way of life, the more that you keep Finding the devil on earth. You are unintentionally making sure that those Mennonite preachers cannot see the light. There's the uh, passage, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I'd always seen this until this teacher called Cat Curve, who is one of JP's favorite teachers. I'd always seen that verse as I'm going to bind the devil on earth so that he can't touch me. But then I discovered something incredibly evil in my own family. I discovered that the exact way that I was binding the devil out of my life was the exact way my father was was being bound in his life. Everything I was binding the devil out of my life, that's what my father was being bound by. So while I really enjoy the expose of what the Mennonite church teaches, I'm saying this now as a Prophetic warning. If you do not put it in your book that the Mennonite church is not to blame, that it is the kingdom of darkness that they've listened to, that they've been influenced by, If you do not put the focus onto the spiritual realm of darkness for every teaching that the Mennonite church puts on its members, as you have judged, you will be judged. You will be judged that you are binding people up. Take it from someone a tad bit older than you, walked a similar path to you. Don't bind the devil off of your life. Find forgiveness. Find love onto your life. 
find the ability to agree with the accuser that all the things you participated in in your life under the Mennonite rule, you recognize as sinful. You agree that it is sinful. You agree that it is a spiritual type sin. You agree that it is not a person. But a spirit that put them in that mess. Now, for approximately 38 years of my life, I wore against my father. I did everything I could to point him out as the bad guy. I did everything I could to make sure that every every other person knew how evil he was. And I got some to actually hear. But the ones who knew God, the ones who truly understood the way of God, they would come to me and say, Norm, you don't see your father the way that God you don't see him in love. You see him in contempt. And as long as you see your father in contempt, you cannot heal. Well, that part was true. I didn't see it as true when I first started saying it. And I specifically remember this one guy that I worked with. Pretty sure he won't mind me saying his first name won't say his last name but donnie was somebody that i worked with and my dad adored donnie and i adored donnie so it was a mutual i adored donnie my dad adored donnie my dad couldn't stand how i work and i couldn't stand my dad so you know we had two mutual things going on and donnie couldn't figure out why the father and the son both loved him and can't stand each other. So Donnie and I were talking it over once. I said, just make one mistake. Or like 10 mistakes in a row. And watch. Watch. My dad will become unglued and call you the worst names in the book. And you'll just drive away. And Donnie said something that was really eye-opening for me at the time. He says, I don't know why you want me to treat your dad with hate. I said, no, 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 we're not. It's not hate. He says, listen, if you're not doing things out of love, you're doing it out of hate. And everybody who hates another, they're murderers. They have no inheritance in the kingdom of God. All that, that thing of salvation that you say you have and the, the, the Christianity that you walk in, that everything, if you hate anyone else, you're a murderer. You have no interest into heaven, none. I said, well, just, just for this experiment, do it. So Donnie did. Sure enough, after about six mistakes in a row, my dad cussed Danny out, says, get off this property if you don't want to do anything right. Donnie came to me, told me, and I said, told you i told you and donnie says listen all you told me is that hatred works on your father <laughs> you, ever, you ever see anybody roundhouse kick and they just get the, get the beat knocked out from under yeah that was me he said all you did was tell me and proved and i proved it to you hate works on your father you have so much angst and bitterness against him, and the only thing you can see from him is angst and bitterness because you keep feeding him angst and bitterness. Well, that, that began to work on me. So when, 
when Mr. A from South Africa began to work with me, August two years ago, and worked with me up to November. Life, the way Mr. A has taught me, is so much easier. Now, specific thing of repentance that God has given to me and also to Mr. A is that I lay my life down on my father's side and my mother's side, and I name my father Isaac and Joseph Miller, and I name my mother Rebecca Kina Yoder Miller, and I did these prayers for hundreds of hours. Now mind you, went 38 years in angst and bitterness against my father. I didn't have a relationship with him. In February 2023, my wife's like, you need to forgive your dad. Forgive him. Just, just forgive him. I begrudgingly forgave him. It did such a work for my dad that in a span of one month, God caught him up in 40 years of one. Just <sighs> unlocked something. Where every way that I had been in anger and bitterness against my father fell off of him because I forgave him. Not that he apologized or forgave me or all of that because I, who knew better, did it first. So, that's February, forgive him. March 2023, the enemy is trying to trip me up and my wife, briefly in jail, gets released. And in that time span, God shows me 12 different ways of bitterness. I go to teach it um, in November 2023. God delivers me from perversion. And then this past year, a genuine miracle. In the last week of August, went to go see my parents with Tanisha and my dad and I had a literal conversation for about two hours. Here's the goodness of God. Not only has God delivered me from bitterness, my dad is what is going to be over about the theft of the heart identity. And this author is talking about the very same topics of bitterness. How going by this way of bitterness can steal <coughs> the identity of God's design from the heart. So how I, where I had come to my dad to show him all these things that I was learning, it was actually something that God was teaching him at the same time. And we had a marvelous evening. I'm sharing them with them 13 things of bitterness that God has delivered me from. And when I come back, God delivers me from two more things of bitterness. I'm telling this as a testimony, telling this as a instruction, telling this as a Showing you it can be done. I spent 38 years hating my father and two years repenting for me and him. And God restored 42 years. I'm sorry, he restored 40 years. Because, you know, from birth to two years old, I didn't know to hate my father. But I started hating him at the age of two. And so me repenting, agreeing to be guilty, 
literally several thousand weeks. Not because I wanted my father to burn. Not because I saw my father as the source. But because I saw, I began to see him as a person that God could reconcile, that God could heal. When I began to do that, I began to see that every place that I had repented and had agreed I was guilty of, it couldn't be found in my father either. So, this is still for Harold. <laughs> Take it from somebody who tried what you're doing. I challenge you. Begin to see the Mennonites as begin to see the Mennonite bishops and preachers as victims. They are victims just as much as you are. The difference is they're the ones in the pulpit and you aren't. But now you've got, you've got this book, it's an expose, and you want the world to know about the evils of the Mennonites. It isn't. It is not the evils of the Mennonites. It is the evil of the spirit of bondage. Which has existed since before the flood. We are not going to expose the spirit of bondage by talking about its victims as if they're the source of the problem. Talk, JP. No, you spot on. <laughs> Oh, um, so I've told the admins of the Repentance 101 group. I haven't told the Repentance 101 group yet, but um, this thing of laying your life down, because God said this thing of laying down because it's a benefit to God much more than a benefit to yourself. Going that route is how to actually be set free. My wife is living proof. This past year has been incredibly difficult for her and at the same time incredibly restorative I, I pulled some of her some of her um, testimony uh, two weeks ago Monday and I got quite a good response out of the, the group here's what I haven't told you she had uh, not quite the issue of blood like the woman in the New Testament, but she had some irregularities going on. Had been going on for for all of her life when the you know time of month started. Well, this past September, she was healed. Now instead of it going for three or four, three and a half weeks with only couple of days without, without any flow, God suddenly healed. Here's the neat part. God healed her, and she wasn't even talking about that for her needs. God healed her from a physical ailment that she had finally given over to him completely, said, you heal it when you're ready. 
So the first thing that we are aware of in September is that God had healed her there. Then in October, she begins to have these visions of preaching to covens. Then in November, God put her soul fractures, took all the soul fractures of all the reasons why she could never really connect to a group. He took all those fractures, healed them, put that soul back together. And she is such a drastically different person in just a week. This today is just relaxing. And she said, Norm? I said, yep. It's like, why do you mock my voice? It's like, I'm not mocking, I'm copying. <laughs> and she said, well, um, I'm doing something for God. I said, all right, what's going on? She tells me about a client that she's working for. The woman had had hospice there because she was making all the death sounds, all the sounds of death. And um, she, and Tanisha began to pray for this lady and the death the sounds stopped. And she began to just be there Nor basically normally, this woman had been a nurse, but then she'd fallen and suddenly took so such a level of ill that she lost her very vitality of life and began it began to look like she was going to die. Tanisha said, I'll be I'm fasting for this woman. I'm on a only water fast. And I'm working for this woman overnight. And I'm praying for her. And I'm interceding for her. And God's going to heal her. But I'm fasting. And I'm not eating food. And she says, and this is my second day without food. I'm, just, I'm like, I didn't tell her this. But I, I was like, who are you? And what did you do with the wife that I had last Friday or last Thursday? Who are you? This is not, this is not the Tanisha that I married. This is not the one that said I do when she, she's talking to me on um, April the 22nd. She says, you know, we've got a really good thing here going here. You should pop the question. I said, I already did 10 days ago and you said yes. So you better to stay with it. But this is not the one that I married on the 20th of May. This is not the one who Angela did all the vows over. I am not the person that Angela did the vows for. Tanisha is not the person that uh, did the vows for. So Angela's not the person now that she was when she did the vows in her husband, H.B., is not the person that he was. In fact, I feel I can say this. H.B. is not autistic anymore. Amen. He is completely free. A lot of repentance, a lot of deliverance. Jesus is Lord. A lot of growth. Yeah. Remember, I seen Tanisha grow. Well, all of us have grown, but to see, see Tanisha, remember, Tanisha was a baby Christian. <laughs> and for her, the leaps and bounds that she has become, so I know it's, it's insane to me. No, you can't even, no question, no denying. It's all 
because of Jesus. It's remarkable. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've helped her. I've been smooth better. I've seen it. I've seen it when she's not close to God, which is not a good thing. <laughs> you know, it's just like we all are. We're not going to night and day. <laughs> and it's just, uh, she's just a blessing just to see her grow like that. It's awesome. And where she's going to be even deeper because she's, she's getting, like, like I told, remember, Angela's house, right there, that table, I told her, you were there. I said, you don't get it, do you? <laughs> You're more powerful than you think you are. You and Norm were married for a reason. <laughs> you had these five, you were, like I said, you you get there. You'll get it. <laughs> and she got it. She's getting it, and she's grown so much. You're equally yoked. He said, I don't know about you and Norm or someone. No, 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 no. You are too. You, you just did it. She did to see it, you know. It was part of growing. I think as baby Christians, we don't have. A, we don't. We don't have a clue, you know. And just to, for that quick growth, even that day I saw, it, I was like, you know, again with Angela's deliver, how Tanisha just tackled it like a probably like, Whoa, really? <laughs> very, very powerful. God moves in mysterious ways, people. No denying. I'm like I said. Three years, almost three years ago, six months before I came in a group, the enemy tried to take me out with three word curses for three different doctors to say, get your affairs in order because you only got a couple weeks. I'm right here. <laughs> Thanks to the blood of Jesus. Thanks to Jesus Christ, I'll be 100% cured. <laughs> Possibly the most unique part about the way that God restores stuff. Is that he, he's a gentleman, yes. He'll always be a gentleman. He'll always do it that way. He'll always be ready to do stuff in his timing. Tax. But sometimes he has his timing all set up how to let it flow. And then we have it in our heads that we're going to be the boss of what's going on. But sometimes and the level of freedom that God wants to give us in the level of freedom that we actually walk in can be two different levels. Um, Wayne called Tanisha uh, Tuesday. And he and I talked for a little bit. He asked me a question. He said, uh, how can you know, how can I know that I am no longer walking in the love of God and that I'm actively now going against the love of God? And uh, I said, well, for me, I can't talk for you, but for me, here's how I know that I am no longer walking in the love of God. And this this fits for this evening so easily. Um, I said, the moment that I see the mess that somebody else is in, and instead of wanting to help them, I want to make sure that their burden becomes a whole lot heavier. And I want to make sure that they can't find out that I'm the one that made their bird heavier. That's the point where both grace and mercy stop speaking in my life because I've, I've now begun to speak in hatred for the person. And Wayne, amazing at asking, Wayne, amazing at being used by Holy Spirit to ask amazing questions. Um, he says, well, well, 
did you do you when that has happened to you? Did you know it? I said, not immediately. At first, I just thought I was walking out the vengeance of God. I thought this was my duty to walk this out against the person. But when things started going wrong in my personal life, when I stopped having fellowship with those who I could get along with very easily who were Christians, when I could no longer get along with them for even the, for just very small things, when I couldn't do it and I couldn't figure out what was going on, that's when I realized, oh, I'm not walking in, in mercy. I'm not walking in grace. That's why it can't speak through me. Somewhere I have decided I am good enough to put a burden on someone. I am now an emissary of hell. Yeah. So, because I have work tomorrow, and Tanisha's working her shift, she, was, she is not here tonight. She will not be. She said, she's like, I don't know how many nights it's going to take. But I'm working this overnight until she walks. Until, wow. until the client walks. So. Well, the, Tanisha, as I can recall last week, from a video I sent to Miss uh, Spiritual Mother Kat Kerr, she had re received the impartation of the lightning power of God. She should use that on her. Release the lightning power of God on those legs. Bingo. Well, I will definitely send this clip to her to watch. <laughs> and she, and she, and she bring, the light bulb should go on when she hears it. <laughs> but the possibly the most unique Part about how to do life, how not to do life. And by the way, I'm, I'm starting the uh, outro music right now. Uh, one of the most unique things about the way God does this thing called restoration is He waits until we have gotten to the point where there is nothing else that we're saying except for His design. Yeah. And the time that it, that only His design begins to work in our life, that's the point in which we finally realize how much we've been carrying and don't be carrying, and how much God has been free if we will but give it to us. And I have announced it on Wednesday, whatever, and I'm telling you about it, I'm telling you about it, or on Tuesday, rather. Send him the judgment. I cannot. 